the sun has been very active lately and is about to undergo a critical and fascinating change reversal of its magnetic field. This phenomenon occurs roughly every 11 years, marking the midpoint of the solar cycle, and it has far-reaching implications for us here on Earth. In fact, it's possible that any day now, the sun could pose a serious risk that could result in complete chaos and disaster for everyone on the planet. As you're about to discover, the sun's magnetic field is generated by the movement of electrically charged gases in its interior, a process known as the solar dynamo. Over time, this magnetic field becomes increasingly complex and twisted due to the sun's rotation and convective motions. Eventually, this process leads to a complete reversal of the magnetic pole or a tide north magnetic pole becomes the south magnetic pole and vice versa. So, let's break down the whole process and get a closer look at the sun day. The sun is composed primarily of hydrogen and helium in the form of plasma, a state of matter where electrons are not bound to atoms, resulting in a mixture of free electrons and ions. The sun's interior is divided into several layers, with the core at the center, surrounded by the radiative zone and the convective zone. The core is the sun's innermost region, where nuclear fusion occurs, converting hydrogen into helium and releasing vast amounts of energy. Above the core lies the radiative zone, where energy is transported outward through radiation. In this region, energy moves slowly outward as photons are repeatedly absorbed and re-emitted by the solar plasma. The outermost layer of the sun's interior is the convective zone, where energy is transported by convection. Hot plasma rises towards the surface, cools, and then sinks back down, creating convective currents. The solar dynamo mechanism operates primarily in the convective zone and the toxic line, a thin layer that lies between the radiative zone and the convective zone. The toxic line is crucial because it, with the sun's differential rotation and shear flows, play a significant role in generating the magnetic field. Now, here's something interesting that you might not have known. The sun does not rotate as a solid body. Instead, different parts of the sun rotate at different rates. The equator rotates faster than the poles, a phenomenon known as differential rotation. This differential rotation stretches and twists the magnetic field lines, amplifying the magnetic field. The solar cycle is an approximately 11-year cycle, during which the sun's magnetic field goes through a series of changes, culminating in a reversal of its polarity. This cycle is driven by the solar dynamo and involves several stages. At the beginning of the solar cycle, the sun is in a state of solar minimum, characterized by a low number of sunspots and minimal solar activity. The magnetic field is relatively simple and bipolar, with a clear north and south magnetic pole. As the cycle progresses, the number of sunspots increases. Sunspots are regions of intense magnetic activity and are associated with the emergence of magnetic flux from the sun's interior. These sunspots appear in pairs with opposite magnetic polarity and migrate towards the equator over time. Around the midpoint of the solar cycle, the sun reaches solar maximum, a period of peak activity with the highest number of sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections, CMES. The magnetic field becomes highly complex and tangled due to the continuous twisting and shearing by differential rotation and convection. As solar maximum wanes, the magnetic field begins to reorganize itself. The twisted and tangled magnetic field lines reconnect, and the global magnetic field gradually reverses its polarized north magnetic pole becomes the south magnetic pole and vice versa. This process is facilitated by the migration and cancellation of opposite magnetic flux regions. After the polarity reversal, the sun enters a period of declining activity, leading back to solar minimum. The magnetic field simplifies again, and the cycle is ready to start anew. Currently, we're in the solar maximum stage, and the sun's magnetic field is going to flip. During this stage, we can expect to see some incredible activity from the sun that could be as deadly as it is fascinating. However, the sun's magnetic field reversal is not a sudden flip but rather a gradual process. As the solar cycle progresses, the sun's magnetic field undergoes a series of changes. When the magnetic field is at its most twisted and tangled state, it reaches a tipping point and begins to reorganize itself, resulting in a flip. So, do we know when the sun's magnetic field is about to reverse? Scientists monitor the sun's magnetic activity 
using a variety of tools and techniques, observatories equipped with powerful telescopes, both on Earth and in space, provide detailed images of the sun's surface and its sunspots. Instruments like the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory SOHO and the Solar Dynamics Observatory SDO measure the sun's magnetic field and track changes over time. One key indicator of an impending magnetic reversal is the behavior of sunspots. During the solar maximum, sunspots appear more frequently and are more pronounced. As these sunspots migrate towards the sun's equator, they signal that the magnetic field is becoming more unstable and is preparing to flip. While we're on the topic, let's dive a little deeper into sunspots. Sunspots form when the sun's magnetic field lines become twisted and tangled due to differential rotation. Since the sun is a giant ball of gas and plasma, the equator of the sun rotates faster than its poles, as we previously explained, and causes the magnetic lines to stretch and warp. When these lines loop above the sun's surface, they inhibit the convective flow of hot plasma from the sun's interior, resulting in the cooler, darker patches that you see in sunspot images They kind of look like big holes in the Sunday. Sunspots are not just fascinating solar features. They can sometimes produce very powerful solar, flares, and coronal mass ejections. These phenomena release vast amounts of energy and charged particles into space. When directed towards Earth, they can interface with satellite communications, disrupt power grids, and pose risks to astronauts in space. Additionally, the increased solar activity can enhance the auroras, but also increase radiation levels in the Earth's upper atmosphere. So, while we're on the subject, Let's dive a little deeper into the difference between solar flares and coronal mass ejections. While solar flares and CMES are both powerful bursts of energy from the sun, it's important to understand that they differ significantly. Solar flares are sudden, intense bursts of radiation caused by the release of magnetic energy associated with sunspots. They emit a lot of energy and light, often in the form of X-rays and ultraviolet radiation. Think of them as a flash of bright light and heat on the sun's surface, similar to a huge explosion. On the other hand, CMES are massive ejections of solar wind and magnetic fields from the solar corona. Think of them as giant bubbles of gas and magnetic fields that get hurled into space. When a coronal mass ejection occurs, it sends billions of tons of solar particles into space at very high speeds. That said, you can see that solar flares and CMES are related, but they're not the same. A solar flare can happen independently, but sometimes a particularly powerful solar flare can be accompanied by a CME. So, while a solar flare doesn't always cause a CME, they can be linked. When it comes to danger, it depends on what we're talking about. Solar flares can disrupt radio communications, navigation signals, and pose a serious risk to astronauts in space due to the intense radiation. CMES, however, can have a more widespread effect that can cause geomagnetic storms that disrupt power grids, satellite operations, and those beautiful auroras can increase radiation in the Earth's atmosphere. So, while solar flares are intense and potentially harmful, CMES tend to be more dangerous on a broader scale because of their ability to affect Earth's magnetic field and, in turn, become a serious threat to Earth's technology and infrastructure. Something else to consider is that during periods of high solar activity, the amount of cosmic radiation reaching Earth also increases. Satellites and other spacecraft are particularly vulnerable to increased solar activity. The charged particles from the sun can cause damage to electronic components, interface with communication signals, and even alter satellite orbits. In summary, the sun's magnetic field reversal is a natural process that occurs approximately every 11 years and is a key part of the solar cycle. This reversal is associated with increased solar activity, including sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections. While the reversal itself does not pose a direct threat to life on Earth, the associated phenomena, such as geomagnetic storms, can have significant impacts on technology, infrastructure, and even climate, scientists are closely monitoring the sun's activity to predict and mitigate the effects of solar storms. The sun is a dynamic and ever-changing star, and its behavior continues to captivate scientists and sky watchers alike. The sun's magnetic field reversal is a testament 
to the complex and fascinating processes that govern our universe. While it may pose certain risks, it also offers us a deeper understanding of the natural world and our place within it.